Maybe it's a good thing that videos get lost sometimes, and it was my fault. I hit the wrong button, and I deleted all my work from yesterday, but I think I can com compress it here for you now. I hit a major, major snag here on Daphne. Uh, Daphne, of course, has, you don't know this, maybe you don't. She has a 1978 305. She has probably the same era, I believe, C3 automatic transmission. And so, therefore, they're not much manipulating, but a little bit uh, when it comes to how the transmission is mounted. And that caused major, major problems for me yesterday. Is that my streamline? No, there it is. Uh, and I'll show you what it is. You'll see that's where the, the, the new assembly bracket and a tandem cylinder go and uh, for the brakes. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to cut a hole and get into that, but I'm going to try. I don't know yet. But I'll show you. The thing goes back to here. I mean, it goes back a long way. I had no idea it was so huge and so uh, in-depth. So you see those two holes right there? That's transmission mount. And this is the bar that I had to remove yesterday. Or not remove, but, but hit back or push back. This bar goes up all the way up here. Well, guess what? That's right where... It's, right in the middle of where the big tandem cylinder goes. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that yet. Uh, so that got lost. I don't know how many people manipulate these things, but I doubt that too many of these trucks have the original gearbox in them. Maybe they do. I don't know. Uh, I don't, I, and I also don't know quite what I'm going to do here. I think I'm going to put a steel plate between here and here. And uh, so, you know, this thing here is loose. Oh, uh, well. At least it's not bolted in, let's put it that way. Because uh, that thing, it's in there pretty... Okay, noise alert, you see, you know. You see it's uh, uh, been pushed way back. Because I can't even test fit uh, the bracketation with that thing as it is. So that's problem number one. I believe I can overcome this uh, in a couple of different ways. Also notice that this is... Uh, probably still usable. I don't think that it's uh, you know completely destroyed. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I don't know because I don't know where this transmission came from. I don't know where this came from. It looks like I got a little leeway to deal with. I could probably just look up 1978 El Camino uh, transmission mount and a FAR 305 and I'll probably be okay. But I don't know. So we'll have to sort that out. One of the warnings was about this uh, this uh, speedometer cable. I believe that to be true. You see that metal stub sticking out right there? Uh, right here, that is for the uh, manual clutch. There is the arm that came off of the manual clutch. Uh, this is all the hardware I took off yesterday uh, from, from all of the mess I ran into. So we're going today, I believe I'm going to work back here and uh, see about, uh, yeah, I know. I don't know what I was thinking. I think that was a temporary thing I used to hold it while I bolted it in, as I remember, but I just left it there. What are you going to do with that wire now, you know? Uh, these, uh, that, that's not a problem. That's tight. I looked at that yesterday. I know this looks kind of chalky and weird, and it is. So I'm going to try to do a little plumbing back here today. It's all in the plumbing. And uh, see if I can get some lines going. So let's talk about what I did, other things I did yesterday. I think I'm about to lose another battery. Those, I haven't even cycled those through enough uh, to make them go. So if you don't have... See, I've got a bunch of, i got a bunch, uh, this isn't even all of it, of, of, of brake hoses I've collected over the years from various places. You know, there's a brake master cylinder right there out of TR4. And uh, so, I had to band everything together back here and salvage 
you know, everything I possibly could to get this to go. Now, I was going to tell you this. If you see this kind of fitting, that's generally for, uh, uh, you know, the uh, double uh, helix. What do you call them? You know, double, uh, double back. <laughs> double flare. There's single flare and double flare. If you see this kind of end on something, I would. Those are for bubble flare. See, that's a bubble flare there, and uh, and they're not. They're not double back. Luckily, I have uh, I have been able to find about every fitting I need to to get this to work. To get this new system to work. And here is another thing you're going to need, or something very similar to it. They do have better uh, than this, but this is pretty good. It's an Eastwood, and it's it's a flaring tool for, for hoses. 3 16 quarter, 5 16 and 3 8 And it's got all the different settings on it. So we're going to be using this a lot. I finished all my powder coating yesterday, uh, so those are clear coated. So I don't have to do any more of that. I got, well, I got to tell you, I got tired of that. So uh, anyway, that, that's a long process. I'm hoping tomorrow to have the new tires mounted on uh, the rims here. So let's let's uh, let's come over here for a minute. I think the light's okay. And uh, this is where I've been. Most of let me turn TV on so I can get Pandora going. This is where I've been uh, between. Uh, uh, this and this to come up with this. So, uh, excellent diagrams. These these are great. I got lucky guessing on the 1958 Corvette uh, uh, master cylinder for manual brakes. I don't know if they had power brakes in 58, but whatever. Uh, so, uh, it worked now because these fittings are different. These all these all these fittings are different, and you can tell they cross. The back goes to the front, front goes to the back. That's because the cylinder is turned around. So you better have a lot of stuff ha hanging about, a lot of pieces. So down in here, I've got uh, the fittings for this. Will be going to the right front, and there's another fitting going to the left front. It's down here. And then I've, I've collected these. These are going to go into the hoses that go to uh, the metal hoses that go into the rubber brake lines. Those are the old ones. Now the uh, the rear brakes are a little different. You, you go directly in. I ran into another problem. I I can't I can't seem to fit uh, from back here. This is a quarter inch line, and I just luckily had that. And I'm going to go directly into this quarter inch, uh, quarter inch uh, fitting here. And this is the T fitting that we're just about to put on the rear axle. And then you come out three sixteenths, and then the three sixteenths go directly into the wheel cylinders uh, back there with no rubber hoses. But there is a rubber hose that goes between this and uh, so the rear axle can move. I am going to have to delete that. I don't have a way of doing that. Uh, I don't know uh, uh, what to tell you. It's because this comes out a quarter, uh, and this was, this was the fitting that was halfway down the uh, right side, the passenger side of the truck. There's another, another fitting that was in the back that accepts the rubber hose. We're going to, that's sitting back there. You just saw it on that table back there. But I'm going to, since I have nickel, copper uh, hoses, I'm going to just sort of make it very relaxed back there. I, I don't think that we're going to be in a situation where we have to worry too much about flexing as much as we do with the front wheels. So, boy, what a long dissertation, huh? And this is the rod that, that's going to go up to the front. It comes with a new pivot. I don't, I'm not really sure. I, I guess you put your spring on that if you want to. Uh, I don't know what that would do for you. I, I, it's not really mentioned in here. I don't see it. I don't know what that is other than some kind of spacer. Uh, but anyway, this the, the, you get the pivot pin, the lock pin goes here, you put your zerk fitting in, and then you grease it all up. So uh, we're going to, I think what I want to do now is I'll go hang this thing up there and let you see what it looks like. 
and uh, we, uh, I, oh, and let me tell you this too. When, when you're plumbing all this stuff, uh, leave everything very loose. Leave all of these things loose. And that's true about any time when you're dealing with brake hoses. So you, you, you got you to gotta fight in chance of getting these aligned. These cross thread and you are unhappy. That will lead to a very unhappy outcome. Uh, it's hard to recover from that. I mean, I've been there a couple of times, but, you know, whatever. So this big bracket goes on the, the big bracket out there, and this is exactly where that transmission uh, mount bar was going, right here. So I don't, that's, that's, that's a problem. But I imagine if you got the original truck with everything original in it, and they, there's not that aftermarket cross brace that you saw, then, then you're okay. So I don't know. I kind of want to do something a little different. I spent a long time on this and got uh, lost a little bit and uh, just hit a few wrong buttons. But we're gonna we're gonna uh, do we're gonna uh, make another installment today, and I'm gonna kind of just show you the general uh, uh, overview of how this is gonna work. I don't think this is gonna take an incredibly long amount of time. Probably only about three hours. So, so that thing is gonna be hitting the metal recycle bin. And uh, we're going to be moving to this. Quite a difference, huh? Okay, wow. What a long dissertation. But I think I explained it all. Probably uh, 10 minutes shorter than what I had anyway. So probably all for the better. We have what I hope to be a working T-piece here. I think it's going to be. And we have this here. So all we got to do now and sort of get a rough measurement and that's going to be somewhere let's just say let's make it 20 inches because uh, I got a route around that spring and there let's make it 21 inches okay so all I got to do now is uh, is cut 21 inches off of this 3 16 line okay so I lied I was going to hang the hang the bracket thing I got to do something else. So I got to cut 21 inches off of this and flare it. So you got to remember to take those fittings with you <laughs> and put them on here because if you flare this, you, at least on uh, both ends, you're not going to be getting the fittings on there. So you got to take them with you, obviously. I can't believe they do it this way, but this is the only way I can get this stuff. So look at this package. So what do you, what do you think's in there? Uh, you won't believe it. And the last time it came, it was uh, very surprising to me that they would ship anything this like this this way. Okay, if I don't mess it up first, okay. So what's in here? <laughs> and it's in Arabic. All right, uh, Farsi, I believe, is that language. Uh, I'm not a linguistic kind of guy. I mean, whoa, 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 stop it. All right, so in this envelope, and it's, I can tell it's been a little beat up, is oh, in brake fluid. Look how it see it's beat up a little bit. Can you see that? <laughs> I guess it works for them. <laughs> and I don't know. can't believe it. There you go. They ship brake fluid that way. Well, I'm just, I got to tell you the truth, I'm so happy to have it that I don't mind as long as it gets here. You can tell where they've both been kind of uh, beat up a little bit. That's the way they do it. Uh, let's not argue with the uh, local ways here. Hmm, golly. Something that I'm going to recommend you do and do carefully. This is a uh, 3 16 line, and there's the hole, and it's uh, right around 1 8 in there. It could be a little bit more. So get your 1 8 drill, because when you cut a line with this, you end up with that. And that makes it hard to fit the, the mandibles that you'll see in a minute. So I measured it. It's right about 1 8. I don't think, I think I would want to go. Uh, What's up one from there? 964. So I think I'm going to hit that with 1 8. It's going to take both hands. 
and then I'm going to set it all this stuff up over here, and I'll show you in a second. But you got to get that rim out of there, or you can't get uh, you can't get these in there. And I'll show you in a second if you've never used an Eastwood uh, flaring tool. The other trick about flaring tools, in case I forget to tell you, is don't get overwrought. You know, get when you're doing a double flare, don't don't crush it back on itself too hard. I'll go over that in a minute, but if you crush it back too hard, it won't seal. Okay, and, and I've put these on the wire wheel and I clean the threads up on those. So that'll that'll make your life a lot easier having those clean. Okay, I haven't used this tool very often. Uh, let me tell you a little trick. Get your uh, get your uh, ends and here I'll show you and tape them like this, like that. So you'll see you'll see them there, and uh, and they won't slide off, and you end up having to destroy a bunch of stuff. So what you do here is you got to make sure these blocks are there. There's a there's a double flare one in there. It looks a little different. It's recessed. You'll you'll figure it out. Now, I had to put a little bit of a uh, little strip of uh, sandpaper in there to get them to go. But let's, let's see if we can get this out here and do Operation Zero. So Operation Zero is you give it just a little go, and this will get you square, okay? And that's what you won't get a proper double flare unless you do this action right here. Okay. There's Operation Zero, okay? And that gets you that, that squares up the two blocks and the tube very gently, very carefully. And this thing unlocks right here. You, you know, if you do this, you'll you'll sort it all out. Now, let's just make sure. So, if all else fails. So, I'm not above reading directions. Okay, must be flush like I did. Rotate the clamp back. Push clamp pin in. And then you, uh, for the appropriate size for operation one. So this is a 3 16 tube. So you look for operation one, 3 16 And you can see that's kind of a double flare thing in there. So make sure that that's like that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, uh, what am I going to do here? I'm probably going to change the format. So anyway... That will line up. You want to make sure that's good and tight, not too tight. And just easy does it, Tiger. And you just pull in on this. And you just you just pull in. And you'll feel it stop. Uh, shoot. Let's get these a little tighter. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that looks pretty good, actually. Okay, now that you've done that, you're going to do 3 16 operation 2. And that's, that's it right here. It's for 3 16 and that. Now, this is the one where you don't go crazy. Almost like a bubble flare. It's because that's what it is. This is the one you don't go crazy on. You just sort of set it in a little bit. Because it'll crush it the rest of the way. Okay, that looks pretty good there. So, this camera gets all over me. All right, so all right, so let's see how we did. So you take this off, and it's going to fall out of there. Take that off, and then there's your flare. That's a pretty good flare, considering you know it's homemade, and it's going to be fine. And so now we're going to let that fall down there, and then there you go. Okay. Rinse and repeat, as I've been hearing on. That's a good way to say it. So that ought to set up real nicely in there. And this isn't steel, so it's going to crush real nicely. So let's do the other end. And uh, you don't need to see me doing that. You've already seen it. But uh, that's pretty. And this stuff is so good because you can sort of bend it with your hands. I probably wouldn't recommend you do a lot of that. Or we'll get too obtuse with it because, you know, just don't want to do that. You'll kink it. Okay, so I'm just going to show this one hose uh, because the rest of them are going to just be identical. But there you go. You got your little double double flare right there. So let's put it in. I'll show you what it looks like. And I'm going to use fluid film on some rusty spots under here. And, uh, 
just seems like a good idea. If must be one can do it, so can I. Okay. <laughs> well, let's keep going here. I'll show you where I am. This is a hundred and I think three inches of quarter inch line here. I'm gonna have to get some uh, some wrap, some uh, like I got on the motorcycle, some exhaust wrap. I got that up. That'll end up about right there, and that don't make me happy. The distance between this and that, I'm gonna have to cut that heat back a little bit. I got it tilted up as far as I can get it. I got the brake uh, pedal back in with the uh, with the large pin, and then there's the uh, little holding piece with some Loctite on it. So yeah, I think I'm gonna just wrap this thing as much as I can. So let's look back here. All right, I got this brake hose in here going to, to the T, and there it is. And I've got this one in. And I left it enough to go up and around, and that one's in. Nothing is tight. Everything is more or less finger tight for now until I get this 100-inch one in. That looks kind of, that looks kind of terrible, don't it? <laughs> That's okay. It's just old truck, old farm truck. So you can see what I'm gonna run into when I gotta move this back to here is that ain't gonna be happening because of that thing right there. And I'm what? Uh, oh, 10 inches away. I don't know, I'll have to come up with something. I'm gonna have to get a big hunk of steel and uh, deal with that. I guess, I guess I've done all I can do there. All right, so let's put this big, this big hose in. So the route, well, I'll tell you what, I'll just surprise you. You'll just have to wait and see. Before I show you that, I want to show you this. This was the original cable for the handbrake that was under the dash that if you kind of pull out like this that didn't work because you had to route it 19 ways to Sunday. This is my cable. Now, I grew up on water, so one of these ain't enough, and two of these ain't enough, and three of these is, might, might be enough these cable locks, and that cable's, what, four times larger? And it goes up and around right there, and I don't know if any, I know Larry would remember this. I can't reach it right now, but I'll show you later if I remember. The handle is actually right here, uh, mounted right here on this upper panel, and you can pull up, and then that way, you, when, when, if you have an emergency, you can, you can pull up instead of out at you. It's a whole lot more natural, and you can use your foot as a fulcrum. So anyway, Let's get this pipe in here, this pipe right here. And uh, they have two different ends, so, and remember, I'm not going to have uh, a rubber hose, and I don't think I'm going to need it. But I do have to kind of keep that in mind when I'm stringing this thing in here. Maybe just a hair long on this, but that's better than short. So it's all hooked up, and I wanted it long because I kind of, and I didn't want to run it through that thing because I'm gonna kind of use this as a, as a different animal. I'm gonna use that as a holder. I'm not too scared of this getting caught on anything because, I mean, you know, holy cow. So I'm gonna bend this around and I'm glad I have too much. Now, I gotta see how bad this is gonna be. So let me, uh, let me harangue on that a little bit. Okay, need both hands. I'm going to say this is about, 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 about what I thought right here. So, uh, I'm about, that's where it was, that's where it is. So, we're, you know, six, seven inches away there. I've got some other ideas on see I'm about the same distance here. But see, the thing is, see, look how close that is. And so that pipe, coming out the back of the proportioning valve. That ain't terrible. I might could buy a little bit more space on that. And But see, you're in a catch of 22 because you've got to, I think I can get another little bit. And any little bit I can get, I'll take. And just sort of pad that and uh, do the best I can here. Uh, you can bend this bracket a little bit, but then you end up too close to the muffler. So, I don't know, 
I might come by a little bit more, so I'm almost hitting the, the master cylinder too. I think I can get another little bit. Let's get another little bit. You can just stick with me on this, I guess. Okay. And that's it. That's it. That's going to be all there is. So I'm going to need a hunk of steel. Well, at least seven inches. Seven inches by... Is that five inches, seven inches? But I'm, I'm probably going to make a piece of steel. Let's make it. Well, at least I'll probably just buy a, you know a big hunk of it. So eight by the, the width is going to matter to me more than anything, and that's going to be four and three quarters, four and three quarters by seven. So I'm just going to get the biggest hunk of steel I can. I doubt that I've got anything out there like that. But see, this thing here it rotates. So I think I can make this uh, safe enough and good enough. And uh, I'll probably bolt it in here and then just run some welds here and just bolt and weld it just to make sure. This you can't weld, but uh, you know at least I can at least extend this bracket. Find something at least that thick. You think that is four millimeters? Okay. All right, that's about it. Uh, let's, let's see if I can make these front hoses and uh, see what we're going to do here. So what i got to do here is come out of that hole right there. You can see where it's kind of cleanish, and then there's one on the other side. So uh, let's take this out and do some measuring and make some more hose, huh? So what's a man going to do here? I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come out and up and over and then into this frame and up so I think that's the way to do it now see I got this stuff up here I don't know what all that was for I think that might be for seats oh yeah 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 it's probably seats and I'll make some kind of uh, stabilization device this one will be probably harder I don't know uh, maybe not I don't not sure but the hole here is is there uh, right there and then the brake is there oh no that might not be too bad let's make the hard one first that's the way we always do things around here let's do the hard stuff first now we uh we got this oh i used <laughs> yeah i meant to tell you this uh i used every inch of my old quarter and uh there's no scraps left and i didn't even i didn't even need an extra inch and if I didn't order that, I'd have been five inches short or something. So anyway, I got I'm gonna I am gonna need this 316th. I have used all of that up. So let's make uh, that hose for the right side. We are totally plumbed. I put a little blue tape over that to keep it clean, and that runs to right here. It's 54 inches, and then. Uh, I've got my drums back over here. I've got my fluid film ready to go. Uh, I've got all of this done like we talked about before. Nothing is tight yet. And uh, so there's where that's coming in from, that front left. And then we've got the front right going up and over and coming out over here. And that is pretty good. That's a little extra, but that's okay. I'll take it and bend it down or something. But I don't have my rubber hoses yet, my new ones. My, uh, so we'll see how that goes. So I gotta go up to the house and order some, some wrap. And I'm not gonna do any more today. So that's gonna end this one. Might, uh, one thing I got tight is that bolt holding that locking mechanism in there. So I uh, might want to double check everything before you go. Incidentally, that's a 5 8 head on this side, and the other side is 11 16 right there. So that's pretty, I don't mind when they do that. So I went over to my little white box of stock over there, and look what I found. I found this. So that'll do. And the good thing is I'll just make two of them. 
because I got enough room to do that but within a millimeter or so. So when I get all this stuff done, I'll be able to use this uh, one on each side. I'm going to double this up and uh, and I, I, there's more than enough length here and I can go all the way up and get the maximum amount of, uh, of metal on that. I may actually put another uh, bolt in right there too. So I may put four bolts in that and uh, anyway so i knocked it all the way back to give me clearance for uh for that so i don't have to go get steel i got some i have some and uh so once i get all the lines tight and everything i'll show you what it looks like i'm going to use these steel uh pull ties that i'm glad i have because i'm going to need those for doing the exhaust trap i got that tool there to kind of wrap them up that thing's pretty dangerous. Once you learn how to use that thing, I had a hell of a time teaching Sean how to use it, but you know, who's counting? And then I'm gonna wrap the uh, pieces that are um, rubbing uh, here, so with this stuff. And uh, so, well, it'll be good. It will be good. And so, once I get this going, you see what I'm saying here? I just don't, I just don't see this as being a rubber hose a vent if I'm that far up and I kind of mount it in rubber and uh, I may do something about that here I don't know may, may not make that so rigid so it'll float I don't know hadn't decided yet but I can do whatever I want to here uh, so well I just don't see that as being an issue I know that they were there originally and that's okay so uh, that's gonna be it for this particular episode uh, and I'm looking forward to coming back down here and work I got a I got a whole night and day tomorrow so I got to go and I get something to eat and get some rest and get ready for tomorrow give me a thumbs up smash that subscribe button okay y'all do that for me all right and what's going on outside nice cool breeze considering time of year and everything all right this is the way I do this if you're wondering. If that thing falls down on you, you're going to end up dead. You have a serious case of dead. <laughs>